Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman, and this is the Largely Catechized Life. So, here's a fun game. You're a Christian, right? So, what do you think about latest current event on social media? Because, you know, everything that we talk about on Facebook and Twitter is so positive. But, I mean... What do you say to it? Because, I mean, especially knowing the Eighth Commandment, you shall not bear false testimony against your neighbor. You don't want to sin. You actually want to follow it and fear and love God that we do not tell lies about our neighbor, betray him, slander him, or hurt his reputation, but defend him, speak well of him, and explain everything in the kindest way. Except, the thing is, by saying nothing, at what point are you condoning something? Like, if the whole class sees one kid chewing gum and the teacher doesn't call him out on it, how long before it's just okay to chew gum in class anymore. And that's not a big deal, um, as long as you don't stick it to the desk. I don't know. Um, But the question, though, is what do you do with public sins? Luther talks about them a little bit different. He says, all of this thus far has been said regarding secret sins, but where the sin is quite public so that the judge and everybody know it, You can, without any sin, avoid him and let him go, because he has brought himself into disgrace, and you may also publicly testify concerning him. For when a matter is public in the light of day, there can be no slandering or false judging or testifying, as when we now reprove the Pope and his doctrine, which is publicly set forth in books and proclaimed in all the world. For where the sin is public, the reproof also must be public, that everyone may learn to guard against it. So... In a day and age where the internet has made almost all sin public sin, yay. Luther's points are really important here. He distinguishes between the sinner and the sin. He writes, where the sin is public, the reproof must be public. That if something wrong is going on and you don't say anything, yes, it is basically taking it, you condoning it. We do have to speak against that which is evil. We do have to speak against that which is wrong. But that doesn't mean that we have to speak against the people that are doing it. In fact, according to Luther, we ought to be talking about them less, that ultimately, if we have nothing nice to say about them, we just avoid them altogether. We're not going to let go of the issues, but in fact, we're going to talk about the issues all the more, because right and wrong doesn't depend on who's doing them. It depends on the word of God. And so here, the eighth commandment, you shall not bear false testimony against your neighbor, remains. Don't speak against people, but speak against sin. In this, we can distinguish between the people that Jesus died for and the reasons he had to die. In this, we can uphold the truth and purity of the law while at the same time proclaiming the gospel for those who are crushed by the weight of the law. At this, we actually have something where we can speak against that which is wrong without necessarily seeming like we need to attack everybody behind it. And this is such an important distinction in this day and age because it is so easy to attack people when you catch them sinning. But here, Luther reminds us, if you have nothing nice to say about a person, talk about the sin, and then maybe even talk about the Jesus who died for that sin. Higher Things thanks you for your support. Please continue to support the work we do with youth by going to our website at higherthings.org, clicking on the support and donating securely through PayPal. Your gift helps us in our mission to support pastors, youth workers, and parents in daring our church's youth to be Lutheran. Higherthings.org slash support. Give today.